Good afternoon. Let me get on some earbuds so you can actually hear me. I do have some loud air conditioners going today, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me. Busy day in between stuff, so I'm just going to pop in really fast so I have some kind of time to grab a bite to eat before the next thing that's going on. So I'm here for a little bit. So I want to. I'm hoping that I get some people join me. It's it's Sunday, June something, towards the end of June. <laughs> I don't even know what the day is. Somebody will have to tell me. Um, time is uh, is um, so crazy for all of us right now. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now. So it's all about the crazy today. It's all about navigating the crazy, learning to adjust the sails, learning to um, just kind of flow with it. Because if we try to fight the storm, we're going to go down. So let's um, talk a little bit about what it's like to be navigating these wild crazy seas that we're in this earth every everyone on it it feels like everyone is insane right now there's a lot of crazy energy so as people start to gather the bat signal is just going up so i'm going to be patient and wait and i hope that we can help each other work through the navigational devices that we are all being given right now that's important this is not just you're not just here all by yourself you do not have to do this alone you do not have to do this alone. That message is coming through very strongly. So somebody that's going to join me either now or at any point is going to need that message. So I'm here. I'm going to jump into this in just a few minutes, whether I get a gathering or not today. It's Sunday. It's a busy day for people. And I'm as usual, I'm late. But I do have some other things. So <sighs> Peacefulness. Trying to find my peaceful seas along with all of you, there are days when that ocean, that, that sea that we're sailing tends to get very scary and rough. And it's rumbling and it's and it's pushing us and pulling us and, and we're just going with it. So often it's like, what, there's not much I can do. We try to fight it. The more we try to fight it, the more we go down into deeper into the water, the more, more danger we're in. And so I think that it's important. It's important for us to sometimes just let go. Let go. I've written a lot of pieces on this. I'll have to post one later. All about the captain of the ship, learning to let go. Then that's me. Learning to let go. I, um, I think that there's something important that spiritual people need to spend time talking about. And I hope that I'll get some spiritual people, <laughs> some of you, that will pay attention to this and really hear it. So I'm just going to go on. No distractions today. I'm going to go on. Because we often, allowing for the message, we, um, as with any big belief system, with any big growth spurt, with anything that we've got going, the ego is, is the big, is a filter for us. And the ego will often tell us things that are not necessarily in our own truth. They can be coming from, you know, some experience that we've had in this life or in a past life. And they can ex they can make us believe, oftentimes if we're not really, really careful, those things that we believe we are channeling, that so it's a popular word now, that channeled message, is often coming through the filter of the wrong filter. It's the ego. It's coming through that filtered part of us that has gone through so much pain and suffering and, and um, confusion. It's coming through that filter instead of the filter of love. It comes through the filter of fear. And we can become very high and mighty. We can become very judgmental of other people and their spiritual path, whatever kind of path they're on, whether it be religion, whether it be um, everybody has their focus, right? And so we like to try to believe that because this is my focus, because this is my goal, because this is my experience here, that my experience is somehow the same as someone else's. And even in the spiritual realm, we will often do that. We can come into this place of we start to channel messages and we start in a really great place. And then we, um, we got a lot of attention for it and... And people are starting to put us in front of audiences and people are starting to like, you know, they kind of idolize or whatever. You see that all the time. It happens in religion. It happens in any kind of powerful position. After a while, we begin to lose our focus. We, we start to get to that place where we have forgotten 
our truth. We've forgotten who we really are. And we move into a place of ego, a place of fear, a place of I'm not really connecting. I'm not really receiving because because somewhere along the way my my connection is lost. I'm not hearing the way that I used to hear. There is a big change in our DNA. There's a lot of advancing going on right now. And because of that, there is this place of needing to throw everything down, needing to completely regroup, needing to allow ourselves to come to a place where we are okay and we are hearing, we're reconnecting our signal. And the way that we do that is in our silence, in our solitude. It's coming back to that place where you began. You may have been receiving great signals at some point. You were receiving these beautiful signals from the other side. And you were channeling the energy of angels. You were channeling the energy of source. You were doing this beautiful work. And you were sharing these, these beautiful messages that were coming through. And those around you were like, wow. And the energy alone was amazing. And then you got distracted again and you, and you pulled away from your truth. And all of a sudden the energy shifted and you weren't quite receiving the way that you used to. And so it, it brings us back to that place of almost really is dying to self. Letting go of self. Letting go of that part of you that, that continues to try to control. That continues to try to find reassurance through other people. Um, so we're kind of in a place of reinventing ourselves and the world is crazy the world is really really crazy right now and so it's this energy of reinventing of coming back out of the ashes the phoenix energy of coming back out of the ashes is what we're experiencing right now and, and it's really important to allow ourselves to come into that place with ease to realize that you're, you've become a brand new creature again and to relax let the energy come to you don't try to don't try to push too hard now have you ever worked with a butterfly you're like oh I wish that butterfly would come land on me I love butterflies I love them so much hi Denise good morning good afternoon um, I love the energy of butterflies I always have and Oftentimes, they'll fly right by my face. They'll give me that attention. They'll come in close, and, and I feel so good about that. And there's a part of me that would like them to come and land. And I have had that happen a couple times. I had one land right on my head one day because I was in great stillness. But if I try to catch a butterfly, if I try to force that butterfly to come sit with me, they're not going to come anywhere close. And, and that is the perfect um, example of how energy works these days. We long to grow and expand. We long to have these beautiful abilities. We long to become everything that we are. We're longing to manifest. We've got all of these wishes and desires, right? And we put it out there. We'd really like to have this. We'd really like to do that. Or we'd really like to find love. Or we'd really like to do all these things. And, and then we put it out. We set our intention. And that's the butterfly. It's out there flying now. And then we try to chase it. <laughs> we try to catch it again. We're like... Okay, I let the butterfly go, but now I want to hold it. And holding it will kill it. Holding it will slow it down. Holding it, chasing it around is not gonna is only gonna exhaust you. You're not gonna actually catch it, right? So I'm in that place, and I don't know if you're in there too, that I feel like the world is is at this breaking point. If you look around, people are crazy right now. There's so much energy in the world and those that don't understand what this beautiful energy is that's coming in are experiencing the opposite of joy and bliss. <laughs> They're experiencing stress and strain and weirdness and anxiety and anger and fear and all those things because, because they're being triggered to heal that stuff. It's time to get rid of it. It's time to get rid of it. But they don't understand what that is. They feel as if all of their toys are being taken away. They feel as if the whole world is changing. They're losing parts of themselves. They're losing something, and they don't know what it is. And everybody, it seems, even just going out in public right now, is crazy. There is just an energy of absolute insanity, this anger and this fear that's really, really engulfing the world. So 
how can we bring that back to us? You know, you're going out and you're experiencing this, and we have two choices. We can react to all of the craziness, or we can go back to the beginning. We go back to the be- beginning, and the beginning is where I started this, this whole conversation, the beginning. And I know many of you, whoever is watching this, you almost have to go back to it. But the beginning is that we go back to just us. We go back to our solitude. We sit on the floor. I've been feeling the need to spend a lot of time in meditation again. This is like the bathroom floor when Steve died. I really got to know my true self, my higher self, in that time of being still. And that's where that beautiful connection to channel comes from, is in that higher self. It's like, oh, there you are. There you are. I've been out in the world. People are yelling and screaming at me. It's, it's been really rough. And then you go back into your, your, that quiet space that you built for yourself. And you sit there in stillness. And all of a sudden, in that space, you reconnect. And all of that stuff that you've been experiencing from all those other beings on the planet that are like losing their minds right now, it just kind of melts away. And you sit there in that space of peace. And in that space, in that quiet, where you've laid everything down, that's where you reconnect. That's where the messages come in. That's where you begin to channel again in a way of truth, of integrity, of, of deeper wisdom. Because your wisdom lies in that quiet space. And so I'm really encouraging you today, me too. I call this, I think, navigating the seas. We are in a space right now where the seas are just absolutely... Consider yourself this little dinghy. You're not even a great big ship. You're a little dinghy. You're a little boat out on those stormy seas. Your big ship is probably already sunk because it's been a rough storm. But you survived because you're, you're so plunky. You've survived. You've come back up. You've grabbed a lifeboat. And you're out in the middle of the ocean. And the hurricane is still raging all around you. And you really have two choices. You can try to struggle and fight. You can keep on bailing the water out. You can try to row yourself someplace. But that storm just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. And that's what those people around us are doing right now. They are your storm. They're pushing and pushing. They, don't, they want you to go this way and they want you to go that way. And they want you to do this and they want you to do that. And they want you to be who you always have been. And they don't really want you to grow and they don't really want you to change. Hi, Denise. Oh, I, you are the one I was already talking to. <laughs> In solitude. Very good. Very good. Hi, COVID. Yeah, it does give us this whole virus has been something that has taught us how to be in solitude, isn't it? It's it's not most people fought it and said, I don't want to do that. And then those who just said, okay, I'm going in. You learned. We all learned to be a little more still and more quiet and listen to the voice that was actually talking to us, right? That silence is where we hear because when we're out in the middle of all the chaos, the ego is just screaming, trying to scream louder than all of the noise. So it's in that stillness. So it was such a gift. It's been a time of great loss, and it's been a time of really finding ourselves. And so in that stillness, I always say that because people take it wrong. They're like, wow, how could you call that a gift? I still call losing my husband a gift. And people will look at me funny and think that that's a horrible thing to say. There is a plan in everything. We all have a plan, and it was the worst, most painful experience I could ever imagine, and it was also the greatest gift I could ever receive. He gave me such an an amazing gift, and being willing to step into my world and teach me so much about love, and then step back out and allow me to go through the depths, that horrible, horrible, wicked storm that I went through in that that time period that, that was the worst storm imaginable. And I came back up, and I was in the waves, and I was learning how to navigate my stormy waters. And in that pressure and that that extreme pain that all all came through, we learn, all of us, we learn to navigate in a different way. We learn to experience life differently. We learn to slow down. We learn to let go. And the letting go part is so important. Let go of those things that keep pulling you back. Let go of the oars. Let go of, of those flotation devices, those things that you think are going to keep you alive. It may be a relationship that you're in that you think, well, if I lose this, I'm going to sink for sure. If I lose this, I'll be all by myself in the middle of my sea. How am I going to do that? There's a very sound... It's, I started with this earlier, and I'm going to come back to it. The sound message today is, you are never alone in this. 
you are never left alone. Spiritual um, support is all around you at all times. You think, if I let go of that person that's really holding me back, that I'm going to sink down to the bottom of the ocean. Well, two choices. You know, sinking down to the bottom of the ocean may not be so bad in this case. Letting go and just falling sometimes is the most beautiful thing that we can do. Just letting go. Not holding on to the life ropes. That relationship, that thing, that belief system, whatever it might be that's holding you back, it is holding you back. You're working so hard to hold on to it but it's keeping you. And what happens when we let go of those things or people that we deem as being so important, so key, is that we go from this place of like being stagnant and stuck to like it's like a it's like a slingshot. It it pulls you back. So as you're thinking about it, as you're thinking, what would it be like if I let go? What would it be like if I let go? What would it be like if I let go? You notice I'm getting further and further away. It's pulling you backwards. And the second you actually cut that rope, whatever it is, that tie that's holding you back, you just fly. And you will fly so fast. Your life will come about so quickly. Those things that you've been trying to manifest will come to you so quickly that you'll be like, why didn't I do this sooner? So please be aware of that. Hi, Julie Kiss. Please be aware of that thing. Please be aware of those things that are are not serving you anymore. I talk about this all the time, and I'm talking about this today because it has a lot to do with my life, too. I go through these cycles where I hold on. I find something or someone, and I cling to them with everything that I've got in me. And and here's the thing. When you are letting go, it doesn't mean that the, the relationship or whatever it is comes to a screeching halt. That doesn't necessarily mean what you're doing. It means that if you are still in a place of codependence, of holding on to this because you believe that if you let this go, world will, your whole world is going to come to an end. That's the thing that you're letting go of. Anything in your life that you still cling to with everything that you've got, the, the energy right now and the message right now from the angels is, please stop clinging. Please let go. Please let go and allow. You wouldn't be, you would be so surprised if you just let go and you look to see where your life goes <laughs> where how much it changes and how beautiful it becomes because we're in this energy right now where we are creating we're creating like that bing 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 i want this okay here you go and yet you're still back there someplace thinking that you haven't received it yet and it's right ahead of you and, the, and about the time you let go of that old stuff that you that you're holding on to so tightly it allows you, you drop that baggage, and then all of a sudden you got the ability to move forward and you start moving into those things that you've been asking for. They're, they're right there. They're within your reach. But you can't get them because you're still holding on to the old. It's as simple as that. Thank you, angels, for clarifying this whole thing. And thank you for clearing it, for clarifying it for me because I need it too. Because I can be very clingy. I can be that little child who still has that neediness of, I just want to be loved, I just want to be loved, I just want to be loved, I just want to be loved all the time. And so I can hold on to that so tightly, not realizing that I already am loved, that I don't need to hold on and cling and try to find it all the time, but it's already here. So I hope that you're hearing me, whoever watches this now or in the future, I hope you can hear me on that. But <clears throat> do a little bit of self-evaluation. You spend some time really just getting into that big old heart of yours and saying, okay, you're in solitude, it's quiet. And if anything flashes up to you, ask your angel, set your intention. Okay, what is it that I'm clinging to so tightly that I'm ready to let go of? Please show me where I can let go of that baggage. So I'm not being, we can have relationships that are interdependent, that are fluid, that work together. We can, and that can be any kind of relationship, whether it's a friend or a child or a spouse or a significant other or a dog or whatever. We don't have to be so clingy that we hold on to them for dear life. They are not a life raft. <laughs> they, are not, they are not meant to be that thing that you cling to because you think that if you lose that, that you'll lose all of life. They're meant to be a partner. They're meant to be someone that is an equal, someone that can give as well as receive. That's important. Someone where you can have an equal exchange of energy. 
see the energy when you're with those that you love. Are you giving as well as receiving? Are you allowing for this equal exchange? You come to them, you talk to them, and as you're talking to them, you feel as if they're receiving the love energy that you're putting out, and then they're able to, to give it back in equal measure because those are the relationships that are absolute pure gold in your life. And if you haven't established anyone in your world yet that can do that, that doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to go get a divorce. It means I need to be focusing on the energy now and not the, the physical beingness of people. I need to focus on what they are able to receive and give. And, and are they in the same space? And maybe we're not always in the same space. Maybe sometimes that person's more needy than I am or whatever. But mostly when we sit and we spend time, there's this easy exchange easy it should be just equal and it should just flow and if it's not then we're holding on too tight or they're holding on too tight or whatever and it comes a time to say okay let me reevaluate let's talk let's 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 see if we can work this out let's learn from each other let's grow let's expand so i feel like in the spiritual community we kind of started with that earlier um there is this This need to be perfect, this need to put out a persona of, I am spiritual, (laughs) I am a reverend, I am this, I am that, and because I am, I, my energy is way up here and everybody else is down here or whatever, and we kind of can get this, this hierarchy of energy beings, and I want you to know that that's not true, that we are all able and capable of receiving and giving equally. Not only that, but we all need to learn to be more like that. When we put one person up on the pedestal, you have spiritual teachers that you go to. And when you go to them, if you are coming to a place of, I never understood when I would say, people would say, I'd say, well, I'm going to go through this town, or I'm going to be going there. And they would say, well, why don't you stop in and see me? And I'd say, okay, that'd be fun. And then when it comes time, they just stop talking. And I'm like, what happened? Or they don't come to see me. And it's like, well, I thought that it, I would be, I thought I'd like to meet you, but then once I got there, I'm like, oh, maybe I can't do that. And I'm like, why? Why would you be afraid? And they're like, well, they, because they started to put me, little, little me, silly little me, on some kind of a pedestal. We are all human. We are all human. We all make mistakes. We all um, go through experiences. We all go through difficulties. We all have pain. We all have history. We all have baggage. You know, until we cut it off. We all have that stuff, and none of us is perfect. And the the whole thing, the most important thing about people getting together, and we're coming to a time where we will be able to physically be in the same energy as each other. And the most important thing that we can remember is, please don't put somebody else on a pedestal. Jesus didn't want to be on a pedestal. It was never his intention in the first place, nor of any of the true ascended masters ever wanted to be on a pedestal it's and they are showing us an equality equality amongst us hi lisa and hi annie and so when we get into that space of equality there is no fear you don't need to be afraid of meeting that person you don't need to be afraid oh well then i still have an issue when i meet people that see me here all the time when i meet them in life i'm afraid that they're like well they'll think that i'm something different than i am or they might see me, you know, have a little tiff about somebody cutting me off on the street, or they might, you know, like, they might see me as less than perfect, and that is completely something, that's my baggage that needs to come off, needs to come off. We are all so imperfectly perfect, perfectly imperfect, whichever way you want to look at it, and we're all still in these human bodies, and we have these beautiful souls, and when we're able to meet, whether it be through something like this, where we have a session, we can sense each other's energy, or we meet in real life, we should be we should be just seeing the exchange of energy. We should just focus on that exchange of energy and focus less on that physical, you know, the physical stuff, because truly we're all so imperfect in these physical beings that we are. And yet we have this absolutely amazing, per- perfect, lovable part of us that comes from, that is that is our truth that shines through when we allow it. And in that space, when we focus on the energy, say we, we get together and we're like, at first, I know many people I've met at first were like, 
trying to work through like any other relationship. It's like the physical, the physical, the physical, trying to figure out what should I wear, how should I act, what should I, you know, how much makeup should I put on, how should I do my hair, all that stuff. And then those people that are meant to be in my existence, the more time I spend with them, the less I care about what I'm wearing and whether or not I've got makeup on and whether or not I, I hold some kind of a persona because those are the people that soul, those soul family connections allow us to be our authentic selves. And authenticity is our most important goal right now, to be who we are unapologetically and then just allow for, man, I'm having a really rough day. I'm having a really rough time. I'm going through this and I'm going through that. And nobody judges the other person. It's just easy. It's just, oh, man, I'm sorry that you're going through that. And we give and we take and we have this equal exchange of energy and it's so beautiful, and that's where we're going. <laughs> so I just needed to say that today. I think it's important to share that, that our relationships are evolving. Our bodies, our minds, our abilities, the world, everything around us, everything is evolving, and our relationships evolve too. And when you're feeling that unrest in certain relationships, that sense of, well, this isn't going anywhere, it's not going anywhere, it's not going anywhere, it's not going anywhere, I'm the type that'll keep on clinging and clinging and clinging. I don't want to hurt anybody, so I'll just let it go. I'm just like, no, well, maybe someday, maybe someday, maybe someday, and maybe someday it will. But the relationships that are the most important in your world are the ones right now with those others who will go to that place with you, who will allow you to be authentically exactly who you are. You don't have to try to pretend. You get angry with them, you get angry. If you're angry at something else, you get angry and you just let them know, you let it vent. And, but you still love each other, you know? It's that honesty and integrity of allowing you to be exactly who you are, totally honest with yourself, honest with not having to try to pretend and put up a front and say, nope, I've got this facade, that's all you're gonna see. That's not a true soul member soul family member, soul whatever, soul connection. When you get with them, they see beyond the physical. And your energies then have the opportunity to greet one another. And in that greeting, there's this sense of an intertwining. This, I often see this when I, when I meet someone who is energetically a match to me. It's like this swirl. Like say you take a couple, you've got this, this jar of water and you take a couple colors of paint and they just start to swirl around each other. Maybe you got oil in there too, so they're just like not actually blending in, but they're just easily swirl it a little bit and they just kind of swirl around each other so easy. And there's no battle to see who's going to become if I'm if I'm green and you're yellow, are we going to become brown? <laughs> or if they, you know, if if I'm a lighter color and you're a darker color, will you then take over me? That kind of stuff. It is a perfect swirl of energy where both of you stay in your own beautiful energy and you swirl together and it all becomes this beautiful piece of art. This, um, it's magic. It's pure magic. So, <laughs> Annie, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you guys popped in. I know I have these weird times sometimes. But I'm so glad you guys popped in. It, it's been kind of evolving as I've been talking, so I hope you'll go back and kind of listen from the beginning and hear the whole message because it's so important for us to understand because we're all walking around on the planet right now very confused. I feel that in this group right now. There's a lot of confusion. You, you've got these different people in your life, and you're like, well, you know, no, that person is a month ago for the last 20 years. That's been the most imp important person in my world. And yet, for whatever reason, I don't feel like they are anymore. I feel like a part of me is just, what is wrong with me? Because I don't love them anymore. I don't, it's not that I don't love them, but I don't feel a connection to them anymore. What, what is wrong with me? And there's nothing wrong with you. We are evolving. <laughs> you are evolving. And you're more sensitive now than you were before. And sometimes the evolution of relationships changes too. So... At a time you needed that person in your life, at a time you learned from that person and you had this beautiful connection and then maybe later it's like, oh, they've just kind of shifted and now it's not, I don't feel it anymore. We are all stuck in these physical bodies and we are all very connected. And please know that when you go through these things where you suddenly feel growth and healing, exactly. The most important relationship you need to have is the one between you and your higher self as you get to know your true self better. 
And as you get to know your true self better, that true self starts to feed into you and starts to make you realize that you don't need those, those people like you used to because you can find love just by opening up to your true self. So now I'm not seeking. I'm not out there just looking all the time for those relationships like, oh, I got to find somebody to love me. I got to find somebody to love me like we did like this little needy child. We suddenly stand there and we're like, oh, I am love. I don't have to look for it everywhere. Now, once I realize and I've matured to the point where I realize that I am love, then I can come into the lives of others. And I, and I seem to draw in those other people that know what they are, or at least are coming into the understanding of who they are. And then there's no neediness and no clinginess and no need to try to please and no need to try to cover oneself up. There is this ability to just blend, just come into a place of we're swirling together easily. Our energies just complement each other. We, we, when we get together, the energy expands, and all of a sudden, just because we've all come into the same space together, there's this huge, massive amount of energy, love energy, that we can then take and spread around the world or do whatever we want with it. And so we are coming to that realization that we are here not for these puny little physical relationships which are are very important at some point in your existence but we are here because of the love that we are bringing in from our truth and bringing that all together to expand it so that we can bring this planet into a place of alignment a place of place where it's always needed to be. It's out of alignment with all of the universe. It's, it's just wobbling around, wondering what in the world is going on. How am I going to fix this? It's, it's just the people on it are going insane. And so some of us advanced souls are here to bring the love back. And we bring that back through our true selves, our higher selves. And as we do, we, we connect with one another and, and it expands. And pretty soon I see this beautiful bubble all the way around the globe that brings healing and, and wakes people up so that they can go, oh gosh, what have I been doing? What have I been doing? That's not really me. And I look forward to that day. I, for one, do not like the way that I have to come in and out of relationships, the way that some people can't, you know, it's just you hit this brick wall and you're like, okay, I gotta let this one go. I gotta, I gotta move forward. I can't just keep letting this one hold me back. And I'm just, I'm exhausted with that physical part of me that keeps coming to the same place. And, I've, and I'm sure that some of you are too. So our souls long for these soul connections, these places where we can have an equal. So please know that your, your soul is needing you to continue to grow, to be willing to let go be willing to relax, to know that you are everything that you need and that you are fully supported in everything that you're doing. You're not alone. You are fully supported, whether it be a physical being right now or whether it be the, the spiritual team that's all around you. You're going to be okay. You're going to get through all of this. Lifting the vibration is, going, is calling our existence on earth to transform others. Exactly. Thank you, Annie. Exactly. So... It's a beautiful time to be here, and it's a difficult time. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I've been spending a lot of time just in tears because I look at the news and I look at these things that are going on in the world, and it just, it's so much tragedy. It's so much pain. And part of me, there's that soul part of me that's just exhausted with seeing all, so much hurt and so much anger. And so please know, and I'm telling you this because I get, they're reminding me too that we need to be looking to that and spending time in our bliss and not feeling guilty for that because it's very important for us to hold that vibration really high right now. So that stuff is going on. Don't be too, don't let yourself get too absorbed by it. Send them love, send them healing, and then allow yourself to rise up so that you're not spending all your time down there in that space of pain and negative energy that so many others on the, on the earth are doing right now. It's a difficult, it's a very difficult energy that we're in right now. So let's just go ahead and clear some energy for just a few minutes for anyone that wants to, to hug again. Yes, yes, Denise, I agree. We need to be able to have that physical contact, stepping out of fear, 
stepping out of fear because this is a virus of great fear. I know there have been times when I've tried to fall into that fear too and say, no, I can't hug because I don't want to be, I don't want to get this and I don't want to give that, then I don't want to make anybody else sick, all that. And I'm to the point where the fear is not containing me anymore. It's not keeping me from spending time with those that I want to meet, those that I love, those that can hold their vibration high. I need those hugs. I need to see faces. I need to see smiles. I really have a firm belief that as we come back in and we, we, we reconnect with one another, that the vibration of the planet is just going to go, <laughs> it's just going to supernova. We need it. We need that contact, don't we? All right, you guys, open to receive. Very good, Annie. Let's go ahead. So, Thank you, Lisa, Julia. I'm seeing comments as I'm trying to get through this. Um, let's go ahead and go into some quiet time. Let the angels just minister to us for a few minutes because... If you're anything like me, the earth is um, a very difficult place sometimes to be, and the energy has been very difficult for me in the last 24 hours, and so I'm allowing for the angels to come in and just minister, just say, okay, whatever you need, whatever you need, we're here. So if you will allow yourself to get into that space and just plant your feet, be well grounded, tell your body to ground, you feel that. Whenever I say that, the heat goes right down to the centers of my feet, as if I've just plugged into the earth. So see yourself plugging into the earth. And then the energy begins to come up through your feet. And we're calling in Archangel Michael for protection today, for each one of us, that we would each have a perfect clearing, that our energy centers would be clear, that any cords, attachments, anything that is blocking us, anything that we are ready to let go of, anything, You've got little things in there that you're like, oh, I can't, I gotta get, I gotta let go of that. Today is the day. Let go. Thank you, Lisa, so much. So, whatever you're willing to let go of, they're just gonna take it away and, and clean it up and create new energy for you, a new space, so that you can let some new relationships unfold, new experiences unfold. It's okay to let go now. So, that energy's moving up the legs all the way up into the thighs and into the spine, moving on up your back. You can feel that heat, and it gets your chakras lighting up. You know, you see that root, mm, heart, that beautiful, beautiful part of you, the powerhouse that's in that root chakra, suddenly light up, and it begins to spin, and it's spinning faster and faster, and you actually have two, like two fans going two different directions. And as they get going, they're building up some energy. It's like a big reactor in the base of your spine. And it builds up energy and builds up energy and builds up until it's so full of energy that it moves on up to that, that sacral chakra. And it's just going to throw off anything that no longer serves you. If you say yes to that, you don't even have to really know what it is. You're just saying, yes, go ahead, do it. I don't need that old baggage anymore. You won't miss it, I promise. You'll just feel like, oh gosh, <laughs> I just got new new energy. I feel so much better. So it's coming on up into and clearing that sacral chakra right now for many, many, whoever's accepting. And you can feel the energy move if you're really in tune. And I'm letting the, allowing for the angels, Archangel Raphael's coming in for healing. Archangel Sham, Shamuel has been very, very present today. Archangel Uriel for balancing our emotions. Archangel Gabriel for clarity. And whoever else wants to join us, Ascended Masters coming in. I see just this entourage. They just come circle around us as we sit in a healing space. And there is one that's right beside each one of you to your right. It's your own healing angel, your own guide, whatever, whoever you're calling in. Your soul knows who you need. Right there to your right hand side. You got an arm around you, and they're supporting you. So that energy is moving now up into the solar plexus. That's beautiful. Solar plexus has a lot of stuff stored up. You're going to release, 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 let go, let go, let go. You are good enough. You are perfect in every way. You are worthy. You deserve great love. So allowing for that love to fill you right now. 
And as you do, that heart says, oh, here I am. The heart lights up. Beautiful energy in the heart now. The energy is pulling from that root all the way up through. And every one of your chakras, it hits the heart. And it's forming an expansive energy that's just stretching that heart right up and wide. You can feel that. Beautiful. Up into the high heart. Moving up. Up into the throat. Opening up those vocal cords. Allowing you to speak your truth. Remember who you are. Remember how powerful you are. You are so powerful. No more fear. Let go of all fear. It's not serving you anymore. We're letting go of fear today. To see yourself just taking it. And it's here. This is my fear. And you just drop it. I'm done with it. Letting go. And keep pulling that energy up. It's going lots of energy in the throat. I can hardly pop through it right now. Mm, wow. You guys are getting a big expansion in the throat. Just yawn really big if you need to. Lots of healing going to that throat area. Now it's coming up. Pull it on up. Wow, lighting up in the throat is beautiful. It's like they're they're working through grief is what it feels like. It's like, okay, somebody's got a big grief bubble of sadness. You're losing a piece of yourself and it's okay. It's okay to feel any emotions that you're feeling right now. And as you let that go, they come and scoop it up. <laughs> Take it and recycle it into positive loving energy and it comes back in. So you won't lose anything. And the energy now is up in the third eye. Yeah, Annie, I believe you. Lots of energy coming up into the third eye, that forehead area. Feel that energy clearing away the clutter, allowing you to see more, experience more of your beautiful psychic abilities. You don't got to hold those back. Don't let any old belief systems keep you from having a full experience this time. Let yourself become that magical creature that you are. It's okay. And the energy is now in your ears. If you feel those chakras in your ears. And I also feel heat in my hands. Open up your hands, allowing for that healing energy to come into your hands. It's like heat. Ooh, ooh. Somebody's receiving those healing hands right now. So there's a lot of heat in the hands. Feel that. And the ears are balancing. Hands on fire. Grief, childhood trauma, let it go, Annie. It's okay. Just letting go. Feel in your ears. Yes. I feel some pressure in the ears too. My hands are on fire. I love it when they do that. It's more expansive. It's those healing hands. You reach out and touch someone and they heal when they're ready. When they're when they choose to believe. It's all based on what we believe. Okay, up into the crown, pulling that energy from the heart all the way up through. Big breath. <sighs> blow it out. Just blow it out, whatever that is that you're holding on to. Blow it out, let it go. The angels just grab it. They're like, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Coming up into the crown. You've got a beautiful crown on your head. Feel that weight now. There's a little heat right over the top of your head coming down, reminding you of who you really are. Kings and queens. Your crown chakra is opening up. It's allowing for source energy to come down. This beautiful healing energy comes down over the top of your head. And now it's just flushing right through. So all of the chakras that we've just cleared is flushing down through every one of them. I often think of like those toys that are at the beach that have the little wheels in them. And when you pour water or sand, they just flush right on down through and everything starts spinning. That's what I see. Spinning beautifully all the way down. Feel that energy as it's moving. And it goes down your legs. Heat in your legs all the way down over your knees. Somebody's got heat in the right knee. They've got healing going right there. Achy joints, knee injuries. And all the way down the legs and down into the feet. Flushing away any residual energy, any negativity, all the way down into the earth, through those roots in your feet. 
Okay, now take a big breath and pulling all that beautiful earth energy all the way back through. You can feel it in your heart when you do that. I hope, I hope you're beginning to feel. Ah, nice, nice. It settles you. It grounds you. When you get that earth energy in you, it's like you become a part of the earth. Perfectly grounded. Feeling whole and centered. Clear. This is your goal. As often as possible to get yourself to this place where everything is clear. You are centered. You are whole. Reminding yourself. It's a beautiful time to be alive. Well done. Thank you so much for joining me in that. For anyone that wasn't here from the beginning of it, I, I ask you, it would be a great idea to go back to the beginning. The angels are so present. Thanking Archangel Michael. Thanking Archangel Samuel and Archangel Gabriel. Archangel Uriel. Archangel Raphael. <laughs> All the healers that came in today. Thank you so much. And the loved ones and your higher selves and each one of you. Seeing gold light and white light, that's perfect. That's source energy coming in, Annie. That's beautiful. Just an influx of beautiful healing energy for you today. Well done, you guys. Take this energy. Do with it as whatever you need to do, whatever you feel drawn to do today. What I find is very useful is just to sit in it and then just, okay, I'm open. I'm open to give where it's needed and let your guides, let the angels bring you those opportunities. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, you guys. I'm still sitting in it. I'm loving the energy, so I really, really appreciate it. i got to get on to a meeting. I'm really running late. <laughs> I love you guys so much. I will see you again tomorrow. If all, if all goes well, as usual, I always try. I take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. I love you guys. Thank you for joining me.